Okay, hi guys, uh, this is topic eight, and uh, this is our unit two in HL, and it's on sustainability. So this is uh, just a quick uh, video on the UN sustainability goals, um, and I think we'll watch that in class. All right, let's talk about what sustainability is. So sustainable development, and that's our first topic, and we wanna talk about this word sustainability. So sustainability is the long-term maintenance of responsibility, which has environmental, economic, and social um, dimensions. So essentially what we're trying to do is make sure that we can maintain and be responsible for the environment, so not wrecking the environment uh, through growth, making sure that we have economic growth, that's important, and that we don't destroy um, social organizations, uh, indigenous cultures, and people's ways of life uh, as we're... Um, as we're uh, pursuing economic goals. So the idea is not to destroy the environment or society as we're pursuing economics. And, and in the past, this was not the case, right? Like for, for many, many, many years, um, this was the, the part of the, the equation that, that took the most um, precedence. Now we're, we're moving towards, okay, we need, to, we need to maintain the environment and we need to maintain uh, society. Um, at, and grow the economy. So we're trying to do all three at the same time. And th th there's a there's a term called triple bottom line, which we'll get into that talks about this. All right. So sustainable development meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. In other words, we are not using up all of the resources that are on this planet um, in our generation and leaving nothing for the next generations. And, and again, this has been a problem in the past where where people have uh, sought to exploit resources um, until they disappear. And that doesn't really help us. Uh, you know, and you can talk about lots of different um, industries that do this. The fishing industry, for instance, has wiped out huge numbers of, uh, of species of fish. And, and now people, you know, no longer have those fish to depend on. So, you know, things like that, they're, they're wiping out things for the future, future generation. And so those people will not be able to meet their own needs. All right. This, this is from the... Um, from the um, IB, and it's a really important thing that you kind of understand. So this is what they want you to understand, that historically there has been a close correlation between economic growth and environmental degradation. So in other words, as the economy gets better, the environment gets worse. As economic prosperity increases, so has the environmental quality decreased. This trend is clearly demonstrated on graphs of human population numbers, economic growth, and environmental indicators. Sustainable development frameworks enable the evaluation of the complex and interrelated concepts that are associated with development. Okay, so that's from the IUB. It's something that we want you to know. And one place you can get some really good data on that is this right here. It's called Gapminder. So it's it's kind of fun to play around on. Um, and if you haven't, maybe you should go check out this website and and uh, and look at the tools section. It'll show you some interesting data that you can play with. All right, this is also um, that's what we just looked at. Here we go. Moving on. Where are we with the UN Sustainability Development Goals? Well, um, this guy's going to give you a good idea on that. Okay, and actually, it's pretty interesting. We're not we're not doing as bad as we would think, but you know, of course, there's room to grow. So, um, just you know, have a have a watch of this video, and uh, it's it's pretty interesting. All right, here we go. Triple bottom line. So this is an expanded spectrum of values and criteria for measuring organizational success in economic, environmental, and social terms. Okay. And this is sort of a diagram that we want to think about as, as we are uh, sustainably developing. Okay, we want to make sure that we can we can grow the economy, right? Like that's that's very important. We want to bring people out of poverty. We want people to have economic um, success. We want them to, to be essentially able to support themselves, right? Um, but we also want that to be equitable. So we want people in all strata of society, all classes in society and all groups within societies to have, have economic uh, prosperity. So you can see that the social dimension when we're talking about economic needs to be equitable. Um, it, the, it also needs to be bearable, like it has to be, this uh, society has to not overwhelm the environment as it pursues economics. And then we also need economics to be viable as far as the environment is concerned so that, that you know, you're not destroying the environment in the pursuit of, of economics. And when you get all three of these things right, you end up with the uh, sustainable development in the middle. 
So let's look at, at this. So um, when we're looking at environmental sustainability, what we're doing is maintaining a healthy ecosystem by studying it, working within its capacities, and respecting biodiversity. So here's a here's a couple of examples of, of good and bad as far as, as respecting biodiversity and working within the capacity to uh, of the environment. So for instance, these are palm plantations. And what they do is they take a rainforest and they just cut it down, and then they plant these palm um, di uh palm uh, oil plantations and, and they use this um, and palm oil is used in, in so many products. Um, so it, it actually is, you know, environmentally terrible, but economically it, it's something that, that makes a lot of money, but it's terrible for the environment. What you end up with is something called monoculture where there's nothing in these forests except for these palm oil plantations, literally nothing. So there's huge numbers of palm oil uh, trees, but you know, that's really bad for biodiversity. There's one species there. Now you look at this, this is chocolate. So this is a, a gentleman who is farming chocolate and chocolate grows best within the rainforest itself. So you actually need the, the rainforest to make chocolate viable. And so chocolate can be grown, you know, respecting the biodiversity. And so chocolate is one of those, those products that is good for the environment, you know, more or less, because it's respecting biodiversity. If you cut down all the trees and just grew chocolate, chocolate trees, they wouldn't survive. So you need all of this, these other species in order for chocolate to actually survive. Okay, we need social um, uh, sustainability. So this is maintaining local uh, cultural identities to empower populations, implementing equitable practices to create uh, sustainable, a sustainable environment. So, you know, th this is just a an image that shows the difference between what is uh, equality and what is equitable, right? So equality would be that, okay, all these guys have the same crate, but you know, this, this gentleman can't see over the wall, right? But equity would make sure that everybody has the same access to um, a resource. And in this case, the resource is a baseball game, right? Now, this is also an example of, and it gets to this cult local cultural identities. Um, this is, um, in the uh, Niger Delta in, in um, West Africa. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, oil that's been discovered there, but it has not been sustainably um, uh, dealt with. So basically what's end up, ended up happening is that you get lots of, um, lots of uh, oil leaks and things like that. And it's actually destroyed the way that most of the people in this delta have made a living for years. They made a living with farming and fishing. And, and because of the oil and the oil spills and, and things like that, the fish have, have you know died or gone away. And so these people are left without a livelihood. And you can see that, that basically they've got a huge pollution problem now where or oil is leaking out of the ground and and, and polluting their, their pristine environment that used to be there. So, you, you know, basically the local culture has lost its, its, its ability to support itself um, because they are no longer able to, to uh, fish and farm in the way that they were in the past. All right, economic sustainability. So this is economic development through responsible growth while still increasing productivity and efficiency. So I've got a couple examples here. So first, let's talk about these. Here's an example of an incandescent light bulb, and these are these use uh, quite a large amount of electricity. It maybe this is a you know like a hundred watt bulb, and this is a, um, a much less. You know, this might be like eight watts, but they produce the same amount of light. So that would be an example of of you know growth because you got the same amount of light but with efficiency. Now another example of this is, is lobster fishermen and, and this is actually a, an interesting success story in that lobster fishermen were really good about making sure that they didn't harvest lobsters, uh, especially female lobsters, um, so that the, the population can grow. So they, they made sure that the, the size of the lobster was, was um, such that they, they could go through at least a breeding cycle and that they also were, were throwing back more of the, um, the female lobsters than the male, lobs than the male lobsters. You, need, you only need very few males, but you know, more females can produce more lobsters. So that was a, 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 a you know, sustainable economic development through responsible growth. And they've, they've managed to actually bring this fishery back up to where it's very sustainable. All right. Let's talk about gross domestic products. So this is the total monetary or market value of all finished goods and services produced in a country's border in a specific period of time. 
As a broad measure of overall domestic production, it functions as a comprehensive scorecard of a country's economic health. And so when we're talking about you know, goods and services, what we want to think about are our goods. So goods are, are, you know, things that you can sort of tangible things that you can pick up. And this is, this is called a basket of goods, but it also includes some services like communication is actually a service. And I would say that like healthcare and, and education is, is a service, but, um, you know, food is, is a good, um, any sort of household items are good goods. Okay. And, and those are basically everything a country produces. Now, services usually have to be, they're more intangible. They're things that are, are things that you can't exactly touch and feel, right? They're, they're, they're um, services like uh, banking or telecommunication or things like that, that those are more uh, services oriented. So when we're talking about gross domestic product, we're talking about goods and services. Okay, now one of the things that we want to talk about is decoupling. So this is disconnecting two trends so that no one no longer depends on the other. The act of decoupling usually resources, uh, using resources more productively and redesigning production systems. It is uh, technically possible to deliver the same or equivalent goods and services with lower environmental impact while maintaining social and equ equity benefits. So the idea here is that you are growing your economy. So the, the GDP is going up. But the, the, the amount of um, environmental damage you're doing is going down. And so this is an example of decoupling right here where, you know, in the past, uh, um, the, the amount of greenhouse gas emissions were, were, um, were in line with this green uh, GDP growth, this, is this greenhouse gas emissions. So, but now we've sort of taken them apart and GDP is going up, but um, greenhouse gas emissions are either going down or, or not rising as fast as GDP. And so that's a, an example of, of uh, decoupling. Resource decoupling is the rate of use of a resource um, is decreased through greater efficiency. So this is an example of something called the Leeds Building. You've probably seen these around campus, these little plaques. These, are, these show that you are actually using, um, your, your buildings are designed in such a way that, that the environmental impact, the resources that you're using is not... Um, tied directly to the economic activity. So you can see that this curve is much higher than this. You know, this is more of a flattened curve. This is a much, much uh, steeper curve. And so what we want to do is decouple the um, resources from the economic growth. And, and the same thing with um, the environmental impact. We want to decouple that. So let's, you know, let's have less impact, impact on the environment going down, but economic uh, going up. And that's called impact decoupling. So impact decoupling is um, the impact on the environment of a resource decreases at, even as the resource increases. So for instance, you might talk about electricity. And this is an example of a solar plant that uh, is outside of, of Las Vegas in, in the U.S. And basically these mirrors shine up on a, um, a black surface. I know this looks like it's white, but there's actually, that's because so much light is being reflected off of it. So there's a, a black surface that the, the light is focused on and it heats up a huge pile of salt. So it basically melts salt, like the salt that you put on your food. And that salt is then stored and used to make electricity later. That heated salt uh, boils water, turns turbines, makes electricity. So this is an example of impact decoupling because basically there's once you've built this there's very little environmental impact but you're getting more electricity so it 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 doesn't affect the environment as much especially where they're built there's you know not a lot of uh, uh, life and uh, environmental impact in the areas where they're built um, yet you're getting more electricity out of it all right we have to talk about environmental regulations. So these are specific laws that are passed to regulate the environment, environmental impact of producing a good. And one of the things that I would say is that these are the same place. So these are the same river, just years apart. So this is in the 1960s, and this river caught fire because there was so much pollution being dumped into the river, it actually caught fire. Um, you know, and today there's very little. So part of the, the environmental movement was spawned by this tragedy where, where this river caught fire, not just once, but several times. Um, and you, you normally don't think of rivers catching fire, but uh, there was so much pollution being dumped into them that, yeah, they were catching fire. And so governments got together and said, you know what, let's, let's, uh, let's pass laws 
that regulate how how um, economic growth affects the environment. All right, sustainability reporting. So this is a company report that focuses on four aspects of performance, the economic, environmental, social, and governance um, of, of their business. And here's some arguments for sustainability reporting, and here's some arguments against sustainability um, reporting. So first of all, you know, it improves staff morale, so people feel better about working at the country, or company, sorry. Um, it's a benchmark for the future, so you can say, actually, we want to improve um, you know, on, on our next report, um, the facilitation of environmental policies, so we can improve environmental policies based on that. It enhances progress tracking against targets, so you set targets and you, you're going to track against them. It improves communication on, on efforts and standards towards uh, sustainability. And it improves credibility with the community through greater transparency. And finally, better organizational awareness of environmental issues. So all of those things are on the plus side of sustainability reporting. You know, this is the arguments against sustainability reporting. And um, I'll sh there's an example of a sustainable report on the next slide. Um, they don't really, it's not going to increase your sales. Although some people might say, actually it will, because maybe people will preferentially buy from companies that are... Um, you know, more sustainable than, than ones that aren't. Um, there's doubts about benefits to the organization. Does it actually benefit the organization? Maybe customers and shareholders just, you know, could care less. It's expensive and data can be difficult to collect. And concern uh, actions might not meet, um, there's concern that actions might not meet intentions leading to damage to the corporate image. You know, basically, if you fake it, um, then it, it can damage your corporate image. Now, this is an example of a sustainability report, and what I would like you to do is make sure you click on this and just have a quick read through. This is Coca-Cola's 2018 sustainability report, and it'll go through those, those um, four aspects, economic, environmental, social, and governance. Okay, product stewardship. So this is where everybody is involved in making, selling, buying, or handling electronic equipment, takes responsibility for for uh, minimizing environmental impact of the equipment at all stages of the life cycle, right? So this is the idea that, you know, all the way through this life cycle, impact is measured on the environment, okay? Uh, and so that, that's a really important idea. Um, you know, when you're manufacturing, you don't want to be creating a lot of waste. When you're distributing, you want to distribute in a way that, that you know, uses less packaging, uses less... Um, uh, transportation and things like that, um, customers, how customers use the phone uh, or the electronic equipment, that, that should uh, reduce its impact. You know, for instance, if you can make something that uses less electricity, then, then that's better for the environment. And then end of life, what happens to the actual product at the end of the life? Now, this is all, all stimulated by the design that goes into this. And, and this is a cycle. So basically what, what ends up happening is, you know, if after you've gone through this cycle, well, the designers are going to make something that's more efficient to manufacture, better and easier to distribute, uses less electricity, can be collected easier, and then it can keep, uh, it, that, that's a spiral that could keep going, and, and that'll end up with a, a much more sustainable product. Um, here's an example of, of um, tire recycling. This is end of life tire recycling and it's it's pretty interesting they they tear these things up and make them into playground material bottle deposits it's another example of end of life um, and basically you know the difference between these two bottles it talks about the fact that if you offer a deposit on a bottle that 20 80% uh, of them get recycled and only 23% without deposits get recycled all right now one of the the things that the IB wants you to look into is organic farming, genetically modified food, and forest, forest uh, stewardship. So here's some articles on that, and you should go back and, and check those out. Bioplastics are also important as far as sustainability, and this is an article on that, and you should go check that out. And then green cotton. Green cotton is another example of a sustainable product. This is where you're using less, it's essentially organic co uh, cotton. So they're using less pesticides, they're using less herbicides, they're using as much as they can, they're using um, uh, uh, sustainable methods to, to grow the cotton. Okay, and that's it for today.